Well, I'm out today to take a walk. It's an exciting video, I know. There are a couple of things that I'm gonna experiment with. I'm shooting this entire video at 60 frames per second rather than the normal 30 frames per second so that uh, when I pull it into to DaVinci Resolve, I can easily use some of the footage in slow motion while the regular motion video should turn out okay uh, even with the vocals. And a second thing that I'm trying to do in this video is to learn that I don't always have to video off to the side. I should be able to just move it right here and talk directly into the camera. And I'm not sure which of those that I like better. So I'll leave that up to you in the comments. Do you like this kind of walking or do you like this kind of walking. And the third thing I'm wanting to do in this video is to practice some B-roll that has me walking by in sort of the background out of focus. One of the things about the iPhone is that if you don't manually set the focal length, then it just, whatever is in, in frame is in focus. And I want to be out of focus. So I'm going to try that as I'm walking. I'm just walking around this little fountain here to get some B-roll shots. And you can tell I'm already out of breath. Well, some of that's working and some of it's not. We'll see what it looks like when I get it up on a bigger screen. But in case you're not aware, in order to lock the focus on the iPhone, if you tap where you want to focus, you'll get a yellow box. If you hold where you want to focus, that box will enlarge and it will be, in, it will be locked. You'll get a, a notice up at the top of the screen that tells you that it's locked. The problem is that if you lock it and then adjust your phone just a little bit to you know, make sure it's level, it loses its lock. It only locks as long as the phone is staying exactly where it is. So uh, you have to get it right the first time. And it appears that the closer that you have something to the frame, and maybe even the bigger that it is, the better it does at blurring out things in the background. So that's something to keep in mind. And then, you know, slow motion to slow motion. We're gonna see what that looks like again here in just a minute. All right, so I think I've got what I need, and I'm going to take this back home, put this in DaVinci Resolve, see what this looks like in a final edit with some slow motion, with some out of focus background. The difference between walking like this, which is honestly uncomfortable for me because I am just so used to walking like this, that maybe I should just force myself to do all my videos here from now on so that I can look directly at the camera the whole time that I'm talking. The problem is that the more I walk, the lower I seem to let the camera get, where if I hold it out here, I pretty much keep it at the same height all the time. So I guess I gotta learn, unlearn, relearn. Well, I learned a couple of things today that I think in, you know, in the low run, at, as I've said so many times before, right now I'm practicing, I'm, I'm learning, I'm readjusting, all those kinds of things. That whole idea of being out of focus in the background, I think makes the video more interesting than just everything being in focus. And that's easy to accomplish when you've got a camera um, you know, regular camera with a set focal length and a, and a spot where you are, uh, focusing. What I found is, is pretty easy to do with iPhone as well, as long as there is something substantial in the frame to focus on. 
couple of the shots where I tried it didn't work out too well. Um, but then other shots that I did were just, I, I was, I was amazed at how well they turned out. The other thing is that I learned that if I know that I'm going to try to incorporate slow motion into the, whatever video it is that I'm making, and, and you don't use that all the time, but if I know ahead of time I'm going to, I should probably just shoot everything at 60 frames per second. Because rather than trying to go back and forth between 30 and 60 and 30 and 60, and then when you get into DaVinci Resolve, you forget which clips you did that you wanted to do in 60 frames per second because DaVinci has already done it all, you know, in real time, not slow motion. It's easier just to take any clip you want and go from 100% to 50% speed. You're at 30 frames per second and it's in slow motion and you've got enough frames in the video so that it doesn't look jerk and, uh, so that's something that I need to think about. <clears throat> the whole idea of whether to hold the video, hold the camera to, to, to the side or to the front, I, I, you know, in reality, either, you know, probably both of those ways need to be alternated. I did notice in the edit that the, that the audio is much better when the camera's right in front of me rather than when it's over here and I'm talking away from the camera. So I learned a lot today, and and then the reason that I wanted to look at this, especially this idea about being blurred out in the background, I watched a video the other day from a guy, a very young guy, who was talking about making something cinematic out of something boring. I'm going to try to go back and find that video again, and I, if I can, I'll put a link in the description below. It's a very short video, just a few minutes. And I would highly recommend that you look at it because at the end, at the end of the year, if I can do this every day for a year, at the end of the year, that's the kind of video I want to be producing. Not just a walk and talk and here's this and here's that and, you know, let me show you this over here. But to tell a story and, and really, in all honesty, if I could tell the story without any words at all, and you understand the story, then maybe then I've really learned to do what it is I'm trying to do. We keep growing. The subscriber base keeps growing, and I appreciate that. And uh, the views are growing, and, and I really do. I really, really do want you to leave me comments giving me constructive feedback. What did you like? What did you not like? What would you like to see different? You may not know anything about the technical aspect of what I'm doing. That's okay. You know what you like and you know what you don't like. And that's what I want to hear. We'll see you tomorrow.